so let's take a look at um, some wireless link and network characteristics. Okay, the first one of wireless link characteristics is that um, they are quite different from uh, wireless link. So they have decreased signal strength, right? Although in wired network, there is still decreased signal strength, but um, it is a severe problem, more, more severe problem in wireless network. So a radio signal decrease as it propagates through matter, through uh, fiber or through uh, different copper wire. Okay. And again, since um, it is a shared media, okay, so it interferes from other resource, uh, from other source. While this network frequency is usually, um, some of the wild network frequency operates at 2.4 gigahertz, and it is shared by many other devices, Wi-Fi server, motors, uh, toys, your microwave, something like that. So uh, noise happen, noise indeed happens. Okay, so every uh, property you learned from uh, in, in your high school about light, about wave, okay, it happens. It, for example, uh, multiple path propagation. And I think you have learned, uh, I, th I think you know reflection, right? So if we have a light right here and here is a mirror, okay? And for example, that is a source, that is a destination. And of course, light can go this path and light can, light can go this path. It's very, very similar to wave, to radio signal. So reflection still um, reflects of object around arriving at destination at slightly different times. So it sounds like echo, right? Sounds echo. So your chip need to uh, remove those echo when it try to decoding the signals. Okay, so make communication cross uh, wireless link is uh, much more difficult because it has several uh, properties. Okay, um, this one we talk about is uh, SNR signal to noise ratio. So signal is right here, noise is right here. That is signal over noise. Larger SNR value, that means easier to extract signal from noise because it is, we have a better signal. We have, um, so that's the larger SNR value. So I'll uh, take a look at this blue line, okay? So um, at point A, okay? So the SNR ratio, maybe that is nine, okay? For example, that is nine. That means good, okay? Because at point B, the signal to noise ratio, that might be one or zero, okay? That is a bad, that means bad, okay? So for a good, as an value, okay. Take a look at this one. BR stands for bit error rate. That means um, if you have nine signal to noise ratio, and the bit error rate is one over, I think that's ten million. One over ten million. If you if you send ten million bits, only one bit might be arrow if you have a very nice nine signal to noise ratio but for point b if your signal noise ratio is very bad that is one right that means the uh your bit error rate is um one over 100 that means uh for transmitting 100 bit one bit could be error so that is how you read this uh, blue line, okay? But for the red line and the green line, that means we have different encoding method. We have different encoding method. And those methods are developed by mathematicians, developed by computer science, science researchers. So we have different algorithm, 
of encoding. So those encoding will encode the signal, right? Uh, encode your uh, sorry, encode your bit to signal. So we have different transmission rate right here, okay? But we will not explain how this uh, this uh, coding algorithm works because it is not um, what we it is not part of it is not uh, what we taught in the introduction to computer network okay advanced network textbook might teach you how to do such kind of calculation to do uh, in, in encoding okay uh, usually we call it modulation those are different modulation method okay so think about one 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 thing the voice, the, the frequency of human voice can be between uh, 20 hertz to 20k hertz. Okay, let's just simply say, okay, that is 24 hertz. Okay, but uh, for Wi Fi, when you trans, trans, when you send a, a, a friend, Wi Fi friend, okay, it operates at 2.4 gigahertz. So if your voice is 24 hertz and your target frequency is 2.4 gigahertz, you can simply just shrink your wave length. And you can, and that, and that is what, what we call modulation. So you collect human voice, right? And you shrink the voice to this target frequency, your shrink the wave then, okay? And after the receiver receive the signal at 2.4 gigahertz, and it can do demodulation or what we call decoding. And we can uh, make the signal back to 24, 24 hertz, and you can uh, hear the sound. Okay, that's what we call modulation or demodulation and QAM256, QAM16, Q, uh, BBSK, there are three different modulation methods, but we will not cover the things, okay? The next uh, wireless characteristic is hidden terminal problem, okay? Think about one thing. When A talks to B, basically B is within the range of A's. Uh, wireless communication range, right? If C would like to talk to B, so B will be within C's range, right? But sometimes, if there's a wall or there's a mountain, mountain between A and C, A and C, even if they are very close, their 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 dis, dis, uh, their distance is very close, but there 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 is a wall or there's a mountain between A and C. They cannot hear each other because signal cannot uh, go th a path through a mountain or a uh, very thick uh, wall, right? That is what we call hidden terminal problem. B A can hear each other, B C can hear each other, but A C cannot hear each other. That means when A would like to send a friend to B, okay. It has to do carrier sense, right? So A need to sense the channel, but A cannot hear what C sends. So A believe the channel is empty, the channel is idle, so it sends the signal to B. And C send the signal to B. And C do carrier sense, right? But C cannot hear A, so C believes the channel is empty, the channel is idle. So A and C may simultaneously send signal to B and B hear the collision. So that is what we call hidden terminal problem. So even if you use CSMA, carrier sense multiple access protocol, even if you send, you, you hear the channel before you send in wireless environment, Collision is not 
is inevitable, even if you use carrier sense. But we will talk about how to solve such kind of uh, hidden, hidden, hidden terminal problem later. Okay? At the right hand side, right? When A sends a signal to B and the signal strength decreases before, uh, before it reaches C, so C cannot hear A's signal. When C sends a signal to B and then A, B can hear the signal, but A cannot because the strength, the signal strength is not high enough for A's network, interfa network interface card to receive the correct frame bits. Okay, that is uh, three different uh, wireless link characteristic. Okay. The next one is called CDMA. We have talked about different uh, multiple access method. For example, we have uh, FDMA, we have um, TDMA. We can divide the frequency or divide the time to different time slot, to different frequency band, and different users use different time slot, different bands, and they collision would not happen, would not occur, right? But currently, um, we have another uh, multiple access uh, method it's called uh, CDMA. So um, take a look at this figure, okay? I will use this, this example to explain what is uh, CDMA, okay? So in a multiple access environment, we have one center, we have another receiver, okay? Uh, this sender would like to send two bits, okay? The bit number zero is one. The bit number one is minus one. As we know, bits should be one or zero, right? But uh, in this uh, algorithm, we, we simply, has, we simply uh, assign uh, negative one as bit zero, okay? So we have two bit, plus one and minus one. Okay, we have two bits we like to send. Okay, but before you send your signal out, you have to choose a code. Okay, in this example, the code has eight digit. Okay, the eight digit code is minus one, minus one, minus one, one, minus one, 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 one. Okay, and you keep repeat the code. If you have second bit, third bit, fourth bit, and so on and so forth. Okay, that is the code you choose to use before you send your bit out. Okay, so right here, we do times. Okay, okay. So it's very simple. That is. The first bit, uh, the, the, the first bit is one, right? Run times minus one is minus one. One times minus one is minus one. One times minus one, minus one. One times one, that is one. And so on and so forth, so on and so forth. Okay, the second bit, uh, the second bit, the minus one times minus one. The answer is one, right? Minus one, minus one, one. Minus one, minus one, one. Minus one, one, minus one. And keep going on. So that is exactly the bit you send in your channel. Okay? So at the receiving side, you get this signal, right? And again, when you receive the signal, you need to have the exact same code choose by the sender, okay? And how did you recover this signal back to the original bit, okay? So the answer is that. you Again, you still do times. Negative one times negative one. The answer is one negative one negative one one negative one negative one 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 negative one one so just keep calculate okay and you sum up this value that is 
8. And of course, you have to divide this by using the number of code, uh, the number of digit of the code you use. So the, the answer is plus 1. So that is the first bit you send is plus 1. And again, okay, again, uh, 1 and minus 1, minus 1, 1, minus 1, minus 1, 1, minus 1, minus 1. Minus one, one, minus one, one, minus one. Again, the answer is negative minus eight. And you divide it by eight. The answer is minus one. So the answer is minus one. So that is the how you send your digit with the code. Okay? So I would like to show you one, one, one thing right here is that um, if one of the bits right here, one of the bits right here is flipped by noise or by some interfer interference, so it changes to minus 1. So in this case, that will be minus 1 here. So that will be 7 plus 1. And there will be 1 minus 1. So the answer becomes plus 6, right? But even if it is not 8, but it is still a positive number. So that means there will be a very, very high probability that even if there is one single bit error, but we still know that it's a positive number. So we can still infer that the original bit would have to send still be plus one and even if this code has two bits arrows the number will be six plus one and two minus one right so the answer will be plus four even we have two bit arrow we still have a very high confidence that this plus four is still a positive number right so with a high possibility, the original D0 should be plus 1. So in this case, you can do error checking and error correction if you use a uh, code right here. Okay, so that's one of the reasons we use code. So that's called code division, CDMA. The other thing is very interesting. It's like that. Okay. In a multiple access environment okay we have two senders right here and we have only one receiver and the first sender choose a code and the other sender choose an other code this code are chosen by mathematicians okay they have a very magic code property okay take a look at this one okay when the sender one would like to send this bit out, okay, again, one minus one. So that the answer is minus one, right? But at the same time, if the sender number two send the very first code out simultaneously, okay, and the first bit is one, right? One and one. The answer is plus one. Okay? If sender 1 and sender 2 send the signal simultaneously, these two waves will mix up with each other. And at the end, right? Minus 1 and plus 1. The, sorry, right here. The wave becomes 0. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. The next one is 1 and minus 1. Okay, the signal sent by sender 1 is minus 1. Okay, that's 1 and 1. The signal sent by the second sender is plus 1. And again, when the signal mix with each other, the signal become 0. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. 1 and minus 1, that is minus 1. 1 and the minus 1, that, this one is minus 1. So when the signal mix up with each other, 
the answer becomes minus two in the shared media, in this multiple access channel. So, so on and so forth. So the signal on the channel is a little bit different. That would be either zero or plus two or minus two, depend on different combination of the code and the bit, the, the bit sender one and two like to send. Okay, no matter how, okay, at the receiver, receiver side, the receiver will receive such kind of a very strange signal, the combination of the signals. Okay, so again, let's take a look at this code. Receiver one would like to receive the bit sent by sender one. So receiver one use the code is exactly the same as the sender one's code, which is minus one, minus one, minus one, one, minus one, 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 one. So when receiver one receive such kind of a strange signal, okay, again, zero times minus one is minus one, uh, sorry, zero. Zero times minus one, zero. Minus two times minus one is plus two, right? Two, my, uh, two and one plus two, zero and minus one, zero. Two and one is two. Zero, one is zero. Two and one is two. Take a look at this one. The sum of this value is still plus eight. That means even if the signals from sender one and sender two are overlapped, but if you use the exactly the same code as your sender, the receivers can still decode the signal even if it is overlapped. Okay, and I have to say something about this code. Uh, this code are designed on purpose by the mathematicians. Not all the code have, have such kind of property. Only some specific codes, what we call orthogonal codes, they have such kind of property that the sender can use the same, uh, the receiver can use the same code to decode the overlapping, overlapping signals. Okay, that is very uh, mathematical property. Then we will not show you how those orthogonal codes are generated, but if that can, mathematicians guarantee they do have such kind of um, uh, property. Okay. That is CDMA. So uh, take a look at this uh, figure right here. So we have TDMA, we have FDMA, and we have CDMA. That means we can divide the channel using different frequency band. We can divide the time using different time slot. And in a single band at a single time slot, we can further divide, uh, you, we can further provide services for different users as long as they use different code. So that is more convenient for us to uh, serve lots of people in a period of time using different frequency and using different codes. Okay, that is, that is basically that is what we do in uh, 4G or 5G network. We'll talk about the things later. Okay, so again, that is CDMA. And we will stop right here because uh, we will talk about wireless then uh, next out, next week. Okay. Make sure you check out the, uh, the uh, make sure you check out the, the class website every week. Okay. We have homeworks, we have assignment and next, next week we will have uh, lab. Okay. Check out in our class website or uh, homework submission system. Okay, so uh, I think that is okay. We stop right here.